Hey, this uh, this trip didn't go uh, as as planned. Was that uh, day twenty five? I have no idea. I know that's why <laughs> I, I tried to do it silently, day but 25. then five. What does it matter? Uh, yeah, when I left here, all I know is uh, doing the Mia culpa. Well, no, we're back at the hotel. Yeah, we're back at the hotel. We started two days later. No, it's four days later now because we did. It was Monday morning. That I did the Mia Copa because we all went off the wagon yes. that night. And, oh, uh, that's right. And you were driving me all to right. the airport early, like 6 a.m. for a 8 a.m. flight, which Tucson is so unnecessary. That's like sitting down to take a shit at 6 a.m. <laughs> that you're not going to take till 8. So, uh, and we'd all we'd all gone a little off the uh, off the plan. Uh, I remember the the night before we left, because I had been eating a lot, and I go, I I, I think I mentioned that I, I want to be empty for this flight, so I I took way more than the recommended uh, uh, dosage of fiber psyllium husk pills, as well as a couple of expired uh, fiber laxatives, which work in a different way. The psyllium husk gives you pulpy poop, and where the Failing that, the laxative gives you driving wet diarrhea, which is, I mean, they're both, you could argue either way, which is better, but they're both grand. So, uh, yeah, you dropped me off. Uh, the bar here at Tucson Airport opens at 6 a.m., one of the true loves of my life flying out of here. So I went there, and uh, just after 6, I ordered a breakfast burrito from Trevor, and he always remembers my drink, so he gave me a, you want a single or a double? And I said single, Trevor. You know, I'm, I'm going on a, a crazy flight here, and I'm going to pace myself. So, and Trevor's singles are probably doubles anyway. He's a, good, he's a good guy. He's a great bartender. And one of the few bartenders whose name I know. Uh, R.B. works the later shift. She's great as well. So I ate that burrito, piling even more food into my palate. That it just wasn't moving. All that uh, fiber and whatnot, it wasn't uh, wasn't moving any product. Uh, but I paced myself. I did a couple of crossword puzzles while I waited for my 8 a.m. flight and got on the flight. And uh, problems right away. Okay, the lights inside aren't working or some dog shit. All right, we have maintenance coming. And they're going to fix the lights and they're fucking... Edwin fucking comes on, and she's like, oh, you got us, well, it wasn't his name, Eddie, something. You're going to get us out of this, right? And, and he looks like some fucking stooge, just central casting kind of buckwheat guy, just fucking, he looks like he just got the job. You'll notice that if you fly anymore. A lot of people look like they just got the job <laughs> off a of fucking John Deere tractor. Uh and then they get the lights fixed after a long time, and uh, and they and I'm up front. I got bumped up to first class. Here's the thing: when you're in a small plane like that and you're in first class, you can hear what they're saying to each other about what the problem is really is, as what they're about to make an announcement about what it is. And so they get it all done, and then she goes to slam the door. And I don't know if she's just too petite to slam it tight, but she tries several times. And failing that, I don't feel comfortable flying like this. So they disembark the entire plane. What? We're going to disembark the plane. We're now having a problem with the door. I don't care. I am fucking, I'm in a good headspace. Uh, I don't have anywhere to be. I have a four hour, remember, I have a. And, and you're moving off of the plane knowing you're going to have to fucking dump truck. Right? No, I don't. And that's the problem. Oh. I don't have to poop at oh, all. Okay. I know how much poop is in me, and none of it wants to leave. <laughs> so I go back, sit with Trevor. I'm happy. I, I remember in this entire fucking sixty hours, I only have two remarkable layovers. The first one is in L.A., which I'm counting on because that's where I get my shit together. I'm going to start working on my phone. I'm going to do the first update from the Sky Club in L.A. I'm going to steal some of their bread because I had a thing to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I had all this stuff in my fucking vintage Delta bag. That was just the snack bag. 
because I know I'm going to be eating relentlessly on all these flights. And uh, so I'm not concerned as these minutes and hours start ticking away. When we disembark, I go back, have a couple more cocktails with Trevor, back to my crosswords, and this uh, old guy, he looks like Bob Balaban, who's the guy who got his cock sucked by John Voight in Midnight Express, uh -huh. went on to do other things. Like, he was in a lot of those, like, uh, the dog show movies, you know, with all those same people. The that documentary? Are Shit's Creek, that's in the fucking... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's number two. I don't know, but it's all yeah, those yeah. people. Yeah, they're the exact same cast ever since Waiting for Guffman and through the dog show one and then mm -hmm. fucking, yeah, and then it just repeats. Okay, if you like that, it's like a Boston album. If you like the first song, you're going to like the other songs until you get fucking tired of it. He's like that. And he's like, I'm tired of them lying to us. He says, beside me at the bar. He's not drinking. He just wants to vent. I'm tired of them lying to us. Why is there a problem with the door? They just brought this airplane from uh, out of the whatever. He's been there since 6 a.m. just following whatever the fuck. And, and then, uh, if the door worked then, why does it not work now? I'm tired of this. He's, he's mad as hell and he's not going to take it anymore. And I am very calm in a nice suit going, there's always other planes. Because that's it's one thing. Angry people in airports are like... Uh, to me, like giving a hyperactive kid Ritalin, like it, it, it's, it offsets it. So when I see someone angry, I realize what I look like when I'm angry, and then I'm going to be that's a different you guy. all the time. That, that's one thing I, I really admire about you. When the chips are down, you get more calm. And I don't know how you do it sometimes, but you, it is one of those things where I, you're very aware in stressful situations but sometimes it takes someone that looks like it's the, absolutely if, yes. Is that the dick that I look like? Okay, I think I'm that's, gonna go the other way. With I think this. you had an epiphany a long time ago because you are really good at it. I mean, it really, it 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 makes me calm down sometimes. There's not enough assholes in the world to make me realize. Oh, don't be like that guy. <laughs> uh, and he was this like skinny old Jewishy. Kind of, but wearing shorts, way too old to, to be wearing into shorts. It? Do you have I'm to bring skinny to... into it? <laughs> you know, it's a nebishy. Yeah, yeah. Nebishy, I get it. Which is another uh, uh, dog whistle for Jewishy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm describing the guy. Yeah. He's too old to be wearing shorts on a plane. <laughs> no, but you wear shorts on a plane. Yeah, what was his footwear? Don't know. He was. Uh, I, I guarantee you, there was either sandals with socks or sandals without socks. Uh, but he was wearing sandals. He goes, "What? Where, where are you going to?" I go, "That's. I. I got a four-hour layover." Yeah, but now, if, if at this rate, you, you could miss your flight. I'm like, "There's other planes." So finally, we get back on the doors. Hinky, we Same finally plane? leave, and I realize, oh shit, this pretty much did eat up. My fucking four-hour layover that I'm in, counting on. In LAX, where you have to take a bus to the international terminal, right? Yeah. That, see, Delta was always fucked, and I avoided LA because Delta was always uh, terminal two or three. Mm -hmm. They split it up. Yeah. So you invariably, if you flew into two, you'd have to take a bus to three or vice versa. And then I'm going, wait, hang on, I'm s now everything's great because Delta's all in three unless it's international. So here's, I was afraid and not afraid of international when I was thinking it was a four-hour layover. A, they don't have a, a, a sky club in international, but they will sometimes have, okay, we have a partner with Virgin or someone. And I'm like, I don't know if that's still the case. Do I spend yeah. my time in Terminal 3 at the Sky Club for four hours and then get the last bus over to International, or do I go to International where I know, at least last time I was there, they have a fucking smoking area? Do I tempt myself? <laughs> mm -hmm. didn't, didn't come up. I didn't have fucking time. I get to Terminal 3. I'm like... You land. You Tucson yeah. to LA. Yeah, now I have to get a fucking bus. Oh, wait. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't see bus on my airline itinerary. Now I'm becoming that guy again. Yeah, yeah. So I get to where they drop you off for the international terminal. You take a bus across the tarmac, and it takes forever. 
and uh, they drop you off in some back alley. You know when we play like uh, the Plaza or any casino, and they take you down. Like, oh, we're going to get you the back way to the stage from your fucking suite. Nicholas will take you. He'll, you you'll need yeah. him to get you there. Yeah. You, yeah. They send a security guy up to your suite, and they take you down some fucking back elevator, some service elevator with the fucking double doors and the arms. And, <laughs> and, 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 and then they take you through all these Frank Sinatra hallways, past all the bus people and... You know, the, the 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 buffet stalkers, and eventually, hey, I'm not, I'm in the green room. It was like that, just to get through all uphill on ramps through circuitous ways to get to finally you go, like I I'm not gonna make my flight at the airport <laughs> in the international terminal looking for a gate two two five. I'm like, these are all like ones. Yeah. And I asked some pilot that's walking, I go, where's this 225? They go, I'll go up there. Then I see, oh, gates like 201 to 225 this way. And now I'm already fucking sweating. I don't have a change of clothes. Yeah, yeah. I have the one suit. And uh, this is the first fucking flight. I'm sweat <laughs> sweating. And I get to where it says 201 to 225. And I go to nothing. And it says gates 201 to 225. 15 minute walk. Ooh. Like, you motherfuckers! <laughs> and they dropped you off the furthest spot. Yeah, from the it. Yeah. absolute furthest spot from. And I'm like, I'm not going to make it. So I'm as running as fast as a fucking old smoker can fucking speed walk. And everything's uphill. And I'm like, I, like, I don't want to get stuck. I know I'm going to get fucked at some point during this trip. Oh, yeah. like, I, all the connections are way too tight, except this one. And LAX is the worst place you want to get fucking Shanghai. All the fucking, all the airport hotels are far away. Every time I've gone to an airport hotel there, it, they suck. They're awful. You, it, it's a pimp and hoe ball going on. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fucking terrible. And, uh, so I like I get to like I'm like gassed I'm and I get up like okay you go up these uh, escalators then you f flatten out and then there's another set of escalators where you can see two two five this way at the top the escalators yes Mitch Hedberg an escalator can be broken they're fucking not working so I have to they walk put that little gate so you can't even walk up it. Or they take the steps out. No, you have to. It turns into steps. Yeah. It's something go. weird about escalators. When you walk up them and they're supposed to be moving, it gives you... Yeah, it gives you, uh, like, uh, uh, what's it? Vertigo? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I was looking at dog with an ear infection. Yeah. <laughs> it's the old Becker joke. <laughs> I drive a Jeep. It's got a worse rollover problem than a dog with an ear infection. Uh, <laughs> so I'm walking up the fucking stairs, and I... I look, at the last two stairs, I thought, I don't think I can make it. <laughs> My legs are not working anymore. They're fucking rubber. And I get up. I'm like, I'm missing this flight. There's no way. Yeah. I'm like six minutes before departure. And I get to 225, and there's like 100 people still in line. <laughs> I'm like, okay. But I'm fucked. Because I had counted on all this time to A, drink, eat, Pack some food, like fresh food. Get a sandwich yeah. for the plane. Shit, because I got a ten and a half hour flight now. Grab and go stuff. Yeah, everything. Like figuring out my phone. I wanted to go to the Sky Club and do this first video announcement. Of none of that's gonna happen. And I'm in coach, and I sit down. Like immediately when I look at coach, I had a different. <laughs> I'm in the middle three seats, so I'm on an edge. So people can fuck off that way when they see me display yeah. all my fucking neck ornaments and my ass cushion. And Remind me again, this is LAX to... Amsterdam. From LAX across North America, across the Atlantic, yeah. and then north to Amsterdam. And you see Yikes. the seat that I'm in. There's a dead Asian man in the middle and his <laughs> probably daughter on the other side. And they're just so narrow. Yeah. They look like those really cheap... Uh, uh, wheelchairs that they have like it's just a narrow back like something you'd cart someone off the field on no it's the, like the ones that they cart people down the center aisle it can't be a regular width yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's like you, you're you're 
a regular person's body is spilling over. Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 like, I, alcohol wise, I am not prepared for this. I sit down, I'm immediately claustrophobic. You have no booze on you, like, you have no shorties or little. I have them, but I don't want to fuck with them. First of all, now I'm not on Delta anymore. When I booked this, every flight started the flight number DL9467. I know that's a Delta flight, but they mix and match. This is KLM. So KLM is their Dutch partner. partner. That's who flies out. I should have fucking known better. Never trust a partner. <laughs> it's like saying, oh, you're a comic? Well, we're ventriloquists. <laughs> no, this is not going to work out. I have all my fucking bags of gimmicks. Like I, I, my, my, I have all this vintage Delta shit. I have the vintage Delta pins and the uh, all this like old like yeah. uh, drink free drink thing from 1983 drink coupon dated. So when they go to give you a drink, I give them ah oh, that's so great and <laughs> yeah, and I ingratiate myself like this. This is KLM. They have an in-flight magazine, so I'm looking through. Like, what are we going to get for food? That it gives you very little information other than it says uh, alcohol. We, we serve them only one at a time. I'm like, all right, this is going to be, I can't order a fucking double. Like, I need, because I'm claustrophobic. I, I took, with the little bottle of water, I like, immediately, I have a, to take a Xanax. Because yeah. I'm getting claustrophobic in weird ways, like, I, I put on a fucking movie just to see what it was. This I don't think we've even taken off. And it was something that reminded me of Bingo. No, we hadn't taken off. Like, I can't use my phone now. Like, I want to call Bingo and tell her, oh, I love you, but I can't. Like, that made me claustrophobic. Like, just I can't do things that I could do in the outside world. I better, like, before I fucking spiral out, I better just fucking Xanax. And when they bring my food, they'll bring my cocktail. But you're looking, at, time. you're looking at like a 10-hour flight, right, to Amsterdam? Yeah. All right. Sober. I mean, I, I started drinking with Trevor at 6 a.m. So by this is 2 p.m. that it took off, so that's six hours later, I'd had four or five cocktails. That's good to drive. That's maintenance. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, an hour. They say, yeah, don't do more than one cocktail an hour, you're, you're driving drunk. Well, I didn't have that, and I, I need to be. So I take a Xanax, and the fucking... I was just telling Tracy, like, the Dutch. This is all Dutch flight attendants. Yeah. And they're all, like, uh, school marms, nurse Helgas. The Dutch are the tallest people in the world, yet they still maintain... A far like dwarfs have a way bigger head than their body, but it also works for the tallest people. They have, they have big trunks and they're tall, but their head is still inordinately large, and they they they're no nonsense. Mm -hmm. Can't trick them with gimmicks, and I don't have vintage KLM stuff to hand off. You got a used car salesman outfit. They just don't cotton to any of it. She brings this inedible food. You want chicken or pasta, and you're not going to win either way. So I went with chicken, and it was like some, maybe chicken curry or chicken. Uh, no, it had like a spinach cream sauce, but it's breaded chicken, but it's wet. Like it was breaded, but it sh like it should be crispy if it's breaded, but it's not. Yeah. I wasn't hungry at that point. I just wanted, here's the fucking killer. Beer and wine only. Oh. No, worse, worse. It's beer, I mean, wine or Heineken oh. only. And I always said, I if those Heineken was the only alcohol in the world, I would quit drinking and never have a problem with it. I would not wean myself onto, it's so fucking gross. So I, I, I red wine and this shit, and I'm like, uh, I drank two red wines I'm like, that's as much red wine as you can possibly drink. And it, it kicked in enough. I, I started listening to a book I had started, uh, Audible. It was uh, it's, I thought it was Karen Kilgariff. She has something to do with it. But it's a guy she works with or something. It's called uh, Chase Darkness with me, I think. I've been, I've been talking about it for as long as I've been doing 
these trips and vacations. So I just hadn't got to it. It's so fucking good. And I just put that on, eye mask. Okay. I didn't even use my ass cushion that first trip. And I, I thought I could get away with it. Towards the end, a little... So, yeah, I got through that flight. Fortunately, when I get to Amsterdam, because this is a big fucking airport. Amsterdam's huge. And you're all caught up now. You weren't. You didn't take off late from LAX, so you know everything. But I only have an hour forty yeah, minutes. Yeah, you had a quick, quick turnaround. If it was, if it was like a different part of the, yeah, I, I landed at G four. My flight was leaving out of G five. I thank God. All right, I won this lottery. Yeah. I get off. I'm like, all right. I only have a certain amount of time. What do I do? I get food. Do I learn how to work my phone? Do I go to the closest bar? Yes. Go to the closest bar. Two gates away, there's a bar. Now I'm ordering double whiskey, splash of Coke. I only have a short amount of time. I fucking wordle because now I like, because of the time difference. Yes, Tracy, Christine Hodge, and I do wordle every day. This was like the 155th day or something. Like, I just don't want to miss a day. Yeah. Even though I don't have time to sit and think about my Wordle, I thought I could never lose on this. Never lost once. Now I'm fucking powering through it. Coily was the, you know what I fucking lost on? I, 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 I don't have fucking time to sit and think about it. I put in Collie, C-O-L-L-Y, thinking, <laughs> all right, if it's not a fucking word, it, oh, it is a word. Oh. And I fucking lost on it. Loser. <laughs> that I had just enough fucking cocktails in my head to get on the plane right away. Now it's 11 and a half hours down to Cape Town, South Africa. Good. Pulled out my ass cushion, because now I need it. It's weird how, like, just because when you're in coach, you try to give, like, the armrest, half the armrest to the poor middle fuck, and now, like, I'm in the same seat, and now this is hurting because I don't lean in. And I lean out. You just, weird places you start to fucking hurt, and I don't know how to make you, up for it. You should have gotten the aisle on the other side. For your yeah, well, I should have done that. Well, there's a lot of I should have in this. <laughs> I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> so fucking dumb. I had notes. A lot of them are poop related. Still haven't pooped. S since you left here? No, no, since then. Oh, oh since, okay. since I was going to say. <laughs> this was the night before I left. All now right. this is yeah, yeah. the next day or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you, uh, you, you're logging 25 hours flying so far? And the other thing is I, I'm not properly hydrated because on every fucking KLM flight, they go, oh, and remember... There's, uh, you're not allowed to congregate near the, the restrooms. Well, I'm uh, like 11 rows from the restroom, and if you don't congregate, you lose your place yeah. in line. And the only line is congregating. You can't just like, uh, I'm next, <laughs> ding. Can you explain to the entire plane that I'm next? Like you get up and you go, oh, that is two other people get up because they didn't want to congregate. Now I sit back down. So no, now I'm just going to not fucking drink water since I'm not drinking more than two fucking wines. <laughs> Ugh. This is like, it's basically rehab. This is basically AA plane. You want more wine? No. Do you have more Tums? <laughs> Do you have any Tums? And I can feel it. Like, the poop is congregating right around the seat. Ah, no area. congregating. congregating poop. No congregating. Yeah, it's all fucking, I can feel poop in me. Yeah. And then I keep eating their terrible food. It gets to a point where I could only eat the desserts. The desserts were delicious with the fucking, the crumb cake, what do you, uh, the graham cracker crust bottoms. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the rest of it was fucking inedible. They, they kept bringing you food. And to their credit, but it was awful. Here's a hot, wet sandwich. It's mostly doughy, wet bread, and inside there's a thin film of something that might be marinara or a Thousand Island, 
and it tastes like shit, and it's huge. I mean, I, why? I wasn't even hungry for my own food. I, I ended up, I think, eight pounds of snacks in there. I had all my dried fruits. And stuff. I didn't even want that. I, I wanted nothing except this to be over with. <laughs> I haven't even uh, hit halfway. The ass cushion wasn't working. I get to South Africa, and it's the middle of the night now there. It's like 11 p.m., another hour and 40 minutes. Get off in the middle of the night. All of this, just like G4 and G5. Okay, I'm in the next thing. That's a transfer. You don't have to go through border. Well, in Cape Town, South Africa, there's no one there to tell you, like, oh, it says uh, for uh, internal transfers, go this way. So I go that way. It's out. Like, sir, sir, no. No, you go this way. I go, I'm transferring. International transfer. No, this way. Well, the sign right there has an arrow that says international transfer is this way. But I'll take your word for it. That happened twice through fucking border. Then I'm trying to explain to the fucking border guy that I'm getting right back on the plane that dropped me off. So, and I had forgotten my ass cushion on that plane. <laughs> As I told you, yeah. I, I, I know I'm going to forget this because I know how I get. The last thing you do is grab something from under your ass. So... I'm like, oh, well, that's a good thing because I'm getting back on the same fucking plane if I make it because now I'm going through fucking border. They're taking shit. you outside through customs, yeah. right? Yeah. And then I'm trying to explain to the guy, wait, you're getting on to the plane that you just got off of. Why? Oh, fuck. Like, and then there's the internal liar. Before I'd say I need the miles to hit Del a diamond... No, I've been fucking diamond because of COVID. Yeah. They just extended it for I'm fucking diamond for the rest of my life as far as I know. I don't need to do this. I have, Then I'm questioning myself. Why am I getting back on this plane other than to go home? And so uh, that makes me get on bumped up to first class every time I fly. Oh, okay. I, so I have to go check in again. And the lady said... Uh, but, well, you just got off this plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you want to upgrade? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do want to upgrade. Okay, I have to make a phone call. Do you want me to tell you how much it costs first? Okay. No. 11,000 rand. Oh. Like, and I know, I knew when she asked me, I knew I was probably going to pay pretty much anything. I have no idea the exchange rate for 11,000 Rand, but I'm guessing it's probably like euros. It's probably close. Because I know, like, I booked this flight for $2,000 the entire thing, the which thing. is fucking Jeez. nothing for the mileage you get. Yeah. Uh, and to, to do it first class was going to be like $18,000, which, no, I was not going to do this. I would not have taken this flight. Beer and wine only. I'm fucking out. Yeah. Fuck you. That's why I loved about Delta. Delta during COVID was the only one that did not stop alcohol service on planes. And even the fucking major airlines still let you drink in first class. They just made the fucking chumps... No, no, you get Fanta in coach. We trust first class people to not fucking make MAGA assholes of themselves and rip fucking people's masks off their face while they're sleeping, calling them faggots. No, we didn't do that in first class. But now I'm fucking sleeping with the poppers. Yeah, we get beer and wine. No, you get Heineken and wine. Heineken or wine. Cans. Tall, thin cans, like a white claw of Heineken. <laughs> and there's two different colors, like it's going to make a difference. What was I saying? Uh, you were, you were uh, upgrading it and she told yeah, you 11,000 yeah. rand. Yes. Yeah. Well, ask her and she goes, oh, does, I, and I'm like, all right. I pulled out my own phone and fucking 654 bucks. <laughs> like, yes! I get to lay down for the 11 and a half hours back. Lay wow. down seat. I was so fucking happy. And they served cocktails, but I just had one before takeoff, and then I slept the entire time. It was beautiful. I had movies on, but I didn't listen, or I had books on tape that I slept through. It was fucking gorgeous. I ate a dessert that I didn't care for. Uh, was this uh, KLM again? Yeah, it was KLM, but it was, it was upper class. Yeah. It was so fucking good. 
and then I got... So that was an 11-hour flight back to Amsterdam after an hour and 40-minute layover in Cape Town. Yeah. That hour and 40 minutes is basically half an hour. Yeah. Oh, you're they, start, they start boarding. Yeah. You know, international, they start boarding about an hour early, 50 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so now I, the second layover I have in Amsterdam is five hours, and I got there for the full five, and I got into the KLM lounge, like Sky Club, it's fine. Is it, was it because you were a partner with Delta, or because you were first class? I wasn't first, I don't know, that's a good question, because I was first class just on that flight I yeah, came yeah, off yeah. of, so I don't know if they, I was worried, I didn't think I was going to be able to get in, because I vaguely remembered not being able to get in even though they're partners. I'm yeah. a fucking diamond medallion. I'm almost a two million miler, you mother. I'm gonna, I want to talk to you, supervisor. So you're in Amsterdam yeah. on your layover. You've got five hour layover. My ass cushion back. Oh, yeah. The oh, yeah, yeah. ass cushion was waiting for me. Uh, when I, I walked up, I go, oh, excuse me, I left an, uh, a seat cushion. I was just on this plane. Again, wait, you were just on this plane? <laughs> yeah, and I left a seat cushion. It was a uh, 12G. Uh, what color was it? Red. You sure it wasn't 11G? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> How many ass cushions are there? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's waiting for you. So I got my ass cushion That was the expensive back. one too, right? Yeah, I yeah. got it. It's, it's with Good. me now. Nice. Uh, the fucking KLM lounge. At one point, I just I, I started busting dishes. Again, the fucking help is so piss poor. In the lounge. At one point, I yeah, I went out for something probably to find a newspaper. I left the lounge on my way out. Oh no, it was two sections to the KLM lounge in Amsterdam. It's fucking great, and they have all these signs. Uh, uh, something mountain go that way for entertainment, and like it's gonna. It's these big screen TVs, but yeah. you go up steps and then you can go out onto a, a terrace outdoor thing. And if you want to go to the blue bar, no, they didn't. All the smoking's gone from yeah. there. And I had all those cigarettes for Dave Raider. Uh, yeah, no, all the smoking's done in uh, Amsterdam. They used to have a few small places you could duck into. But anyway, I walked by like 15 empty tables that were littered full. With fucking empty dishes. So when I saw the one lady going, mm, well, all right, let's fucking. So I went to work and I bust dishes for an hour. Uh, had a blast. I figured out her. Okay, yeah, I scraped that into that. The silverware goes under here in the red dish. And pile the plates appropriately according to size. I did that. I did tried you think you were a supervisor or something? I thought the KLM. Airplane food was like airplane food, like the, the stereotype. It's shit on the airplane. No, they had the fucking spread in the Sky Club. This is a huge Sky Club, and uh, it was all shit. Oh, wow. It was, I ate, uh, uh, they had turkey and ham, deli sliced. So you build, had, build a sandwich kind of thing? God, not even, you know, uh, the greatest thing since sliced bread? They don't have it. <laughs> they have loaves of bread that you have to fucking oh. carve yourself, and it's mostly rye or some shit with seeds in it. And when you try to carve your own fucking bread, it always comes out with a hole in the middle, and you have to go around Big the fucking chunk. straight line the last asshole did. <laughs> and if he went like this, then you have to compensate. <laughs> Fuck you, I don't even want bread. I'm just going to eat some meat and fucking cheese. And they were serving drinks. And it couldn't be more than a five or six ounce, like a tulip glass. I guess you give me that, uh, uh, that, yeah. What, what, when you get a glass in this shape, is that a tulip glass? I think it's a, a Collins. Collins glass. Collins Collins glass. glass yeah. yeah, this was like a, a shot version of a Collins glass. So, but, and they have the measured pours. So they put like one ounce, probably not even an ounce and a half, one ounce. Two cubes every time. Two cubes of ice. And so it had to be six ounces because an ounce looked like nothing in it. And then you get this drink. I'm like, a guy came up, before I ordered my first drink, a guy came up and I heard the lady say, sir, how much have you had to drink already? My uh, Amsterdam accent is just like my uh, South, South African South black African. guy accent. Uh, 
and he goes, I've had a head injury. Yeah. So, oh, nice. He, he was used to this. Yeah. Just, okay. But how the fuck are you going to get drunk? If, if they're like that curious, like this is the same. Fortunately for me, the, uh, the people that were doing bussing the dishes that I was helping turned in at shift change. They oh. went to bartending. So now I know oh. he's just some weird guy that was fucking busting dishes for no reason. I'm like, oh, good move. Because now they're the bartenders, but I still was too afraid to order a double based on the fucking rules and regulations from the in-flight magazine and the fact that they ask guys with fucking head trauma if they've had too much. Uh, so Was, was they, it free drinks in the lounge? Yeah, they're free okay. drinks. Just and you tip. don't tip. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I looked they for don't anyone tipping it. or a tip jar... And I, like, I didn't want to, sometimes, because I remember in Scotland uh, occasionally when I was working the fringe festivals for the first time where I would tip and the bartender would take offense. Like, what's this for? As a tip, that's what we do. Like, like I'm not poor, that kind of attitude. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. Now I'm panicky. So I go, oh, shit, I should go see if I could get another upgrade. Because I don't think... This is my last flight now. This is going to Amsterdam to Salt Lake Salt City. Salt Lake City. Yeah. Ten and a half hours. I don't... My ass is fucking screaming. I get such back pain like that I've never had before. The, not, like, the ass, the coccyx, the tailbone, all that. The fucking little meat I have on my cheeks that I had just constantly trying to find a, a spot that doesn't have internal bed sores. Uh, but when I would go to get up, it felt like my hip bones were splitting away from my tailbone. Like, this is a bone pain. This is not... Like, I've overstepped the boundaries of nature by trying to do this <laughs> flight. And it's, it's fucking killing You're not me. a young man anymore, Mr. Stanhope. I and know. Your body was telling you that maybe, maybe half that distance is probably your... Well, or do the whole thing in first, not in... Yeah, but there's that, no, that was the whole it's, point, was doing it in coach to see if I could do it. I did liken this yeah. early on to <laughs> running a marathon just to see if you, how far you can push your body. Well, I pushed it to the point where I went begging for an upgrade. Okay, sir. Yes, you have. Uh, there's only one seat left on that plane. Uh, it was 799 euros, which is about 814 yeah. bucks. No problem. I submit. <laughs> He goes, um, hang on, I have to make a call. Wait, are you a Delta Frequent Flyer member? And I go, yeah, I'm Diamond. I'm almost a two million miler. She goes, yeah, then we can't give it to you. <gasps> you have to, because this is a Delta flight, and it's run by Delta, which is a good thing. Yeah. We can't give that to you, which makes no fucking sense <laughs> at all. And... Uh, <laughs> She goes, you have to uh, go talk to uh, Delta. So I got on my app and I figured out, that's the way you can get me to learn something. <laughs> to Tie it to a, yeah. a service you desperately yeah, need. Yeah, there's going to be a giant fucking carrot. <laughs> and I figured out how to do the, the talk via text. I don't know who told you that eventually. This is after a fucking hour of figuring it out. Yeah. But that is a KLM flight. So then I have to go back and get in the queue, the, the, the text queue, to talk to a representative, which takes another 30 minutes. Douglas Stanhope. Is there is a Douglas Stanhope? Please go to the service desk. And I get a different lady. She said, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know who told you that. That is a KLM flight. Who was it? I go, it's not one of the ladies that's there now. She looks Dutch. You're the only. She had red hair. I go. You're the only one who doesn't look Dutch because you have red hair. It's not one of those ladies. She goes. I don't know. I will file. Be. I. I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but that seat is gone. Oh back. man. So I get on the fucking plane, and at this point, I feel really sick. Like. Like belly sick or just all around? I, I thought at first I've just had enough. But then they came through. If you want fucking Heineken or wine, I'll have a wine. And I just set it in the thing. I, I, have these, I was farting a lot. Oh, man. Uh, 
oh, in coat. I had these belches, and I've had them before. Probably, I, I think the last time I went, I was really sick starting that tour yeah, in Wisconsin, yeah. uh-huh. where I was, I'd belch, and it would taste like charcoal or chemicals. Like, it's a very specific. I'm, like, getting these belches again, and I'm not eating any of their food. I didn't even touch the wine. I didn't want to drink the fucking water because of the fucking queue at the toilets. And then I'm like, "Uh uh-oh. And I went, and I, I, I like, oh, here comes that 72-hour mark of that laxative. Oh, man. <laughs> and I, I got in, and it just pouring out of me, just sludge pouring out of me. And I started to get the sweat, the cold sweats of the pukey sweats. I'm like, and I look down, and there's a drawer that's open in the tiny toilet that's full of puke bags. And I, oh. so I grabbed a couple and I, I, I got through that wave. The more I shit, the less I had to puke. And I've had that before where, okay, yeah, the puke is just, yeah, it's offsetting. offsetting. The diarrhea is offsetting sure. the puke. Letting the puke pressure out. Were you get, were you crampy at all? Like, uh, like, like in your guts? Yeah. Okay. Off and on. Yeah. That's Not as bad worst. as the way back today. Uh, but, uh, uh, so I'm, I'm getting through and I had four times I had to get up and fucking diarrhea that toilet but I was On staving the off the pukes but I had those puke bags eight minutes on the fucking route map <laughs> eight minutes before landing I'm like it's it's happening this poor girl young girl that's sitting in the middle seat uh, uh, are you uh, the aisle? yeah Good. it's the same same thing all, all yeah. the flights were the three seats in the middle uh, so both. And it was a full flight, so she couldn't even yeah. leave the fuck away from you. Oh. No, I mean, well, she, it's eight minutes. Like, I can't even go to the bathroom. Yeah. Like, you're yeah, fucking you're still stuck. locked down. It's, yeah. and then, oh. <laughs> please be over, please be over. <laughs> I filled the bag. Oh. And then the lady's fucking nurse, Helga's coming by to, Sir, stop leaning into the aisle or whatever she's going to say. And I look up and she sees, can I get a napkin, please? Oh, okay. I'll get this for you. Is it Hennigan helping you? <laughs> so I, I'm in Salt Lake, empty, finally. I've shat and puked. And fucking Salt Lake City is the worst airport. And it's not even finished. And when they do finish it, they'll have a complete worst airport. They took a perfectly good airport. We've talked about this before. Only now, I got global entry. So I'm closest to the exit for a coach. Like, there's the exit you it go out. Expedites customs. Yeah. Is global all entry. the first class goes out and all the... So I'm right at the front of coach. So I'm, like, right off the fucking plane. Border patrol. Just stick your head in the camera. Fucking put your fucking fingerprints. Boop. We do not recognize your uh, your face. Uh. Like, 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 I have to, the whole thing, it, like, I have to duck down to get my face in the the part, the outline, and it d- does not recognize, like, what the fuck? It just gets worse. I get, go through, I give Haynes, Officer Haynes at Border Patrol, I give him my thing once it recognizes my face, I give him my receipt. Yeah, what, your, your, your boarding pass, it doesn't, it shows you on two other flights, but not this flight. And I know this is bullshit because there's no flights to Tucson. When you get a small market airport, if you don't make your flight, you're fucked. There's yeah. three flights a day tops from there. There's I'm not on two other flights. We'll go to the fucking courtesy desk over there. This is on the fucking ugly side of Border Patrol. Delta's there. And they go, oh, no, 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 we see you. This isn't quick. I'm making it quick for yeah. podcast reasons. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. No, no, go back. So, fortunately, I'm ahead of the line at the beginning. And I go back to Haynes. They say it's fixed now. Nope, still showing you. Go back over there. Go back over there. Oh, I think we changed your flight because we didn't think you'd make your connection. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, it should be fixed now. I go back to Haynes. No, it still says. Now he's yelling at them. Well, it shows me this. And then I go over there. And now the fucking masses. Now the fucking queue starts yeah, piling yeah. up. And then they go, we fixed it. This is the third time. And now my phone is blowing up. Your flight is boarding. And I go back to, Hayes, can I cut the line? He's like, yeah, come on. 
And he goes, listen, it's still fucked up, but uh, I'm just going to let you go. I'm going to just do it old school. Just go with the thing. And now you've been to Salt Lake City Airport. You got where stuck overnight in Salt Lake. To, to get from the Sky Club is at A26 at the beginning. To go from there to B1, the literal furthest, just like LAX, the literal furthest you could walk, which <laughs> from international border is another 10 minutes on top of that. It's about a 25-minute speed walk. Yeah. And they don't tell you if you're going to make your flight or not. Like, tell me. And no cart, like courtesy make, cart or anything to no, help you, you know. No. Uh, so I got there, and I sent you the picture of the jetway being pulled away from the jet through the window. <laughs> and now I have to walk 25 minutes back, the lady. They told me. I go, you fucking changed. Did I do that, sir? No, I'm sorry. Delta did that. But no, why not you? Someone at Delta did. Why not you? How do I know it wasn't fucking you? Was it me? What, are you going to shift the fucking blame? Cunt! I didn't do that. The guy that showed up after me. They told me they were going to wait for me. They told me the same thing. And just like that fucking nebbishy guy. Yep. This guy reminded me not to be a prick. We both got put up. We were like planes, trains, and automobiles, this guy and I. We both got put up at the fucking double tree in Salt Lake City. By the time I got there, they go, like I had to go to the service desk, rebook the flight. He got the last seat on the d afternoon oh. flight right beside me. I had to go, oh, we're going to get you on the same flight tomorrow night, and we're going to put you up at the Doubletree. I go, put me up for two nights then, because I'm not going to check out at 11 for a 9 p.m. flight. Yeah. Where, where am I going to hang out then? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Go down and you guys get the shuttle and it comes every 30 minutes. I'm about 40 minutes. Shuttle isn't there. I call Doubletree. Are we supposed to call you to tell you that we're here? Because Delta said that you just come every 30 minutes. No, it's by request only. Oh, man. Motherfuckers. I was just seething. And now this is three hours after fucking Border Patrol and all that shit. I just want to lay down somewhere. <laughs> I just want to fucking lay down. And I got to the hotel I threw my shit inside, and I went, I belched, I went, oh, this ain't over. And I started to vomit as though I was releasing jet fuel in an emergency. <laughs> Don't think uh, uh, Oh, like a plane? Been, yeah. yeah. A plane, they want to get all the fuel off the, the, off the plane. Unavoidable crash. Let's fucking evacuate all jet fuel. <laughs> Purge. Yeah. And I called. I had the fucking shivers. It was so nice. Like, sometimes being sick is the fucking greatest feeling because I, I just, I'm going to be the happiest I've ever been in life just having the fucking cold shiver sweats underneath the fucking freshly made hotel bed. And I, the only re I got up because I couldn't find my toothbrush. And I had emptied everything, so I assumed I left it in the KLM lounge. But I go, I can't go to sleep with vomit teeth. I got recognized so much in Salt Lake City Airport after <laughs> I had vomited on the plane. <laughs> Everyone wants to talk to me. And I'm like, I have fucking chunks of puke in my teeth. <laughs> I got to go. Uh, and then, But then I curled up, and I was only awake. I did take a fucking Seroquel. The only thing that woke me up was a, a lava shark. Somewhere, uh, fucking three, four in the morning, I had the, uh, yeah, I sharded my fucking stage man underpants. I felt it like, oh, oozing lava. <laughs> Get to the toilet, chuck them off, sit and fucking drain the rest of my diarrhea while I'm running the hot water in the tub yep. to wash them out. Put down a, the, the, the bath mat. Grabbed the bath mat, put because I didn't have a change of clothes, but I did have one change of socks and underwear. So I didn't want to fucking sleep in the underwear, risk sharding the second pair. So I slept with no underwear, with the bath mat underneath me like Chuck's. <laughs> <laughs> when I woke up in the morning, I rinsed out fucking my silken stage man underpants. And one of the things I never used, which I was going to use in L.A., I found it for... 
99 cents at a thrift store, or like a thermos, but for soup. Like yeah, a, like a thick, yeah, wide one. So you're either going to fucking get some oatmeal or soup from the steal it from the Sky Club, but never got to use it. So I, I put my underpants in there. <laughs> so I'm not going to throw away time capsule. Yeah, they're in there if you want them. No. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then I fucking then I, I felt good. I went to the Sky Club at Salt Lake City. I had eight hours to kill. Pretty good Sky Club. That. It's pretty good. Yeah, uh, got the two. They've got two separate like areas for food, and they usually have them bo both like maintained. Mm -hmm. So if you see a line at the front one, people in the know go to the other side. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then I said, uh, eh, and then I saw that guy. That we both oh, yeah. get the early flight. I saw him out on the terrace. I love they have a terrace view at Salt Lake City Sky Club. It's a so you get to look out over the most obscene fucking construction yeah. site ever. It's like looking at fucking Beirut after a bombing. Like so, I saw, I saw him. I go, hey, nice view. He goes, oh, hey, how you doing? And I go, yeah, I should probably try to fly standby on your flight. It's five hours earlier. Went down, she goes, yeah, it's actually, again, after a 14-minute walk, I timed that one from Sky Club to B6. She goes, I can do it in 12, but I really try to work out. Very cool. Delta, not KLM, fucking nurse Helga. Yeah, it's oversold. I go, oh, that's all right. I don't mind. I'll hang out at the Sky Club. She goes, hang out. You never know. And then she goes, Douglas Stanhope. And I'm like, I'm right here. Oh, there you are. Listen, there's some people that, uh, first class that are not going to make it. I don't think, uh, no matter how good shape you're in, you're not going to make it from A whatever to yeah. here in time. So, you Boy, got, do you know that? You got you get a first class seat. <laughs> I love you. She goes, I want your bag. I had my Delta bag. I go, nah, I don't have another bag, but I gave her one of my Delta spoons. I had my gimmicks worked again. There you go. And then that lady down there, she was my flight attendant, so I bought their first round. The flight crew is down in the bar oh, down yeah. here, and I feel good about myself. But I'm never doing that again, Greg Chaley. No more crazy flights. I thought this might be the breaker. Yeah, that was fucking stupid. There was really <laughs> no reason to do it. I think you wanted to break up the uh, 30 Days in the Hole a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I and, uh, well, you know what? The vomit thing. Really broke it up? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, did I tell you about the... Oh, I didn't tell you about the lounge. Which lounge? Amsterdam? Oh, yeah, no, South Africa, Cape Town. Oh, in Cape Town. So when I bumped up to first class, they said, oh, here you go. And this lounge, everything's closed except for duty-free and the lounge, which is a tiny lounge. Duty-free, I saw, and I go, listen... I'm going to scope it out for Raider. Marlboro Lights. Carton of Marlboro Lights. 419 Rand, I believe. And I kind of knew the... Like, that's going to be wicked cheap. 26 bucks for a carton. $2.60 a pack. Wow. So I bought a carton for Raider. Then hit the lounge, which had a view of the line to my plane, so I knew I wouldn't miss my flight. Free pour on alcohol, so I didn't have to worry about the fucking. I had a, I had five uh, whiskeys in. Why you I I, I would have slept anyway, but I because uh, they were closing up, everyone, and then I I look there's oh there's the quiet room. <laughs> and I go, oh, that's not a quiet room. I know what those fucking dishes oh. are for. <laughs> yeah, so those yeah. were ashtrays. So, yeah, Dave Rader is going to get a carton of cigarettes, less a few. Yeah. And I, you did bust me smoking a few more when I was taking these notes. Yeah. But I did notice that, you know, I talked to you about jet ski theory. Like, quitting smoking, where I, I, had, I rented a jet ski and I spent two hours on it. And then I realized I never once wanted a cigarette. While I was oh, yeah. jet skiing around Lake Powell. When you were busy. And I go, well, there's got to be Occupied. a way to uh, put so. that towards a perfect way to quit smoking. Vomiting <laughs> goes with <laughs> jet skiing at no point. Even when I had those cigarettes, when I was sitting outside waiting for the shuttle for eternity at Salt Lake City Airport, I go, I have cigarettes and I don't want them. 
because I'm afraid of vomiting so much. Just thinking I was possibly going to vomit on a plane. I was making deals with every god imaginable. Just don't let me vomit. Let this wave go away. And yeah, so jet skis, vomiting. I'm going to put together all the things that are the antithesis to a trigger for smoking. And that's going to be... Well, you, if you do a top ten list, you've already got two. Vomiting yeah. and jet skis, and then basically things to occupy your time. Yeah, that, that you can do you. one after the other. Yeah. You can't jet ski for fucking 16, no. 18 hours. You can vomit before you jet ski yeah. and then after. I was going to put fucking in that list, but I've, I, I've a million times said, well, you want to fucking take a break, smoke a cigarette? <laughs> Mostly because you need a break, because you're a smoker and you can't fuck that much. You need a time out. Might as well smoke a cigarette while I fucking uh, catch my breath. All right, let me see if there's a. I don't think there's anything that I missed. I pooped, puked, I'm empty. Was it here you never checked your thermos when it had the underpants? <laughs> Oh, no, they, they, oh they, they, did, they checked my thermos on the way in, like, leaving Tucson yeah. because I, like, I, I room was at a, a you know, scarcity, so I put a, a small uh, applesauce and a small mandarin orange thing inside that, mm -hmm. uh, and they're like, well, and then she couldn't figure out how to open it. And, Could not figure out how to open a thermos? Well, because it has a top thing that has a foldable spoon when it, oh, back yeah. before it was thrift stored. Yeah. It's, that spoon's absent, but she's taking the top off and then, wait, there's still a top. It's not Russian fucking eggs or whatever. <laughs> Nesting dolls. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> so then I thought about that when I stored my underpants for the way home, if they would. <laughs> and then I had a whole fantasy going, like, oh, wait, you thought this is going to stop me? Shitty underpants is going to stop me from searching the rest of your bag? But then in my fantasy, I was clever, and I just had all these fucking poopy things <laughs> hidden where, like, yeah, keep going, keep going, find the drugs, buddy. Crap in the box. <laughs> yeah. They're obviously up my ass. <laughs> all right. Well, I've got lots of questions and stuff, um, people talking about it, but we'll do that tomorrow. Um, that was our first. We got Ten and a half hours on an airplane without having a single drink or sleeping whatsoever. I watched three movies. Ask me what they were. One of them's uh, because I was going to say I have no idea, but one of them was a Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Adam Driver, uh, uh, sword people, knights, uh, samurai. Oh, knights! Night. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know which one you're talking about. It was so bad. Yeah. Like, at some point you go, that's Ben Affleck. Like, oh my God. I don't know where, how is Adam Driver considered a good looking person? There's, every now and then in life you go, women talk about, oh my God, he's gorgeous. Like, what? Adam Driver is like a fucking geek act. Like, you would, <laughs> you would tinkle on him in high school if you were the guy that was a bully. I mean, he's tall and gangly, but anyway. So that was one. And then oh, there was another. He's rapey? Mm. Is that the one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. I watched two watch rape that. movies. The other one was a chick that, like, she got raped and goes back and, like, gets her revenge on... Yeah, that was pretty like good. Is it on your grave? No, it's, I don't know what it's called. No, it's uh, something about a... She's, a like, a perfectly normal during-the-day lady. Or, I don't fucking know. People will fucking chime in. Hey, whatever you do... Don't fly. I think that's my message. Don't fly. We already heard about Tarek and everyone's losing their bags and fucking, they're hiring people who have no idea what they're doing on every level from fucking border to ticketing to upgrades. To, so imagine that that's not going to be any different with the people who know how to make a plane fly correctly. All mechanical guys, fucking Eddie who doesn't know how to get the lights to work or the door to shut. Yeah, that's across the board. If you're at all nervous about flying ever, don't fly. Never fly KLM. If you have to fly, fly Delta. But just don't fly. Take the Suburban. Take the fucking uh, station wagon. The, the country squire with the, uh, the imitation wood siding. Take that across America. Don't fly. There's no reason to do it. 
I'll see you in Michigan and there afterwards. Dates are on DougStanup.com, tour dates, uh, and no charcoal chemical belch. That was a Yay. good belch. All right, I'm going to pee. Bye now.